Hey everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today's Flames of War unit overview is going to be the German Stug or Stug assault gun. So these tanks are um, the ones we're going to be looking at are going to be out of the um, D-Day book so they're going to be the Fallschirmjäger version and that's what we're going to talk about. I'm sure there will be other versions um, of this coming but um, that's the one we're looking at now. All right, so the Stug, what is it? It is, a uh, again, an assault gun, so it's not quite a tank. Um, uh, it's closer to what the Americans might uh, consider a tank destroyer, but it is one of the most uh, plentiful kind of medium armored vehicles that the Germans field. Um, when you're a German player and you think medium tanks, Usually you have two options. You're going to go with your Stugs or you're going to go with your Panzer IVs. Now there, there could be other options, other ways to do it, but those are your two main choices. So what does the Stug do? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the stats for this guy. Um, so, and again, we're talking about the stats, the stats card from the Fallschirmjäger Assault Gun Platoon. So that's out of the D-Day book. If you're watching this uh, in the future and there's other books, uh, with this vehicle in it. Uh, stats may vary depending on where that vehicle comes from. So these are Fallschirmjäger. So they're going to be good. They're going to be like elite um, versions of this tank. So the first thing is that they are rated as careful as far as what they're hit on. So they're hit on a 4 plus which is um, uh, 4 plus is the best it can get. So that means uh, in version 3 that means your veteran it's just hard to hit these guys, which is good because they're Fallschirmjäger. Um, the defensive layout of this tank is um, seven on the front, three on the side, and one on the top. Um, so when you're comparing this to, say, a Panzer IV, whether you want to take this or a Panzer IV, the um, Stug here has one more uh, armor on the front. It also, by default, has bazooka skirts, which um, lets it uh, increase its side armor against firepower five and six weapons, basically making your tank a little bit more survivable uh, versus bazookas and, um, and the like, uh, you know, British Piats. Um, it's not a great improvement, but it takes your three armor, which a bazooka would penetrate without an armor test, to a five, which means you could conceivably bounce it if you roll a six and uh, tie it if you roll a five. So still not a great chance, but it's better than, you know, it's better than nothing. So those bazooka skirts um, can definitely come in handy. Um, front armor seven is great. If you talked, if you saw my video about um, the Sherman 76 versus the normal Sherman and going from front armor six to seven, um, you know what a big boost that is. That means that long range um, these guys are um, front armor 8 um, you know, if they're targeted at long range which we'll talk about in a moment um, when we get to the the more tactics section of the video. Um, Alright so the rest of the stats motivation for uh, these guys is going to be fearless a 3 plus um, which is pretty good. Um, again, and that's relating to their uh, Fallschirmjäger status. If these guys weren't Fallschirmjäger, I'm sure, they, sure there'd be a 4 plus on their motivation. Um, and again, in version 3, that would have made them fearless veteran. Um, they do have in motivation, though, um, since they're a self-propelled gun, a counterattack of only 5 plus. So similar to the M10 that we saw uh, on the American side, these guys um, do not like counterattacking in assault. If they are assaulted and want to come back and stay in the fight, stay in the assault, it's going to be harder for them. Even though they're Fallschirmjäger, they're not stupid. They, um, so they, they have a counterattack rating of 5+. plus. Um, skill, they are counted as veteran, which makes sense. So that's a veteran is always a 3+. plus. So that makes um, things like certain movement orders, things like that. Um, you're successful 66.6% .6 of the time, which is not bad. And then um, also your skill is used for um, hitting your opponents in assault. And uh, again, because it's a self-propelled gun, 
that rating is one worse so it's a four plus so they're they're hitting in uh, you know infantry and gun teams on a four plus in assault even though they're they're uh, veteran skill so again we see that self-propelled gun is always going to make it harder for um, assaults which reflects reality for these guys they did not want to be an assault and if they're an assault something's probably going going wrong um, now sometimes you have to assault with these guys and um, you're going to throw them in a four plus is not terrible um, you know a lot of american tanks hit on a four plus by default not just self-propelled guns um, but it is not what you're used to um, if you are playing version three all right um Let's talk about the speed, uh, pretty standard, tactical of 10, which is what you'd expect for a medium class hull, uh, terrain dash 12, cross country 18, road dash 20. Um, that is all pretty standard. However, these guys, interesting, have a four plus cross check rating, um, which is worse than Sherman's, uh, Panzer IVs, Tigers, um, that four plus means 50% of the time they're gonna not make it through the woods um, so that's something to consider it's not uh, it's <laughs> it's not great so and I, I like to think of it this way if I've got um, you know if I have four of these guys and I put them in the woods at the start of the game if I want to redeploy them I should expect at least half of them to fail their cross checks um, now there are ways to improve that through orders and you can get off some orders uh, pretty successfully but um, just know that that one worse cross check can come back and haunt these guys anytime they're they're doing it it also means and it reinforces the fact these guys are not good in assault if they're going after infantry across a hedge or they're gonna have to make a cross check or in the woods um, they're they're gonna fail and they're already not hitting as hard as as uh, normal tanks would hit all right so um, that's the, um, the, the speed and maneuverability of the tank. Now let's talk about the weapon. Uh, Stug has two weapon systems. One is the 7.5 millimeter gun. And that, uh, that guy is range 32. Um, halted rate of fire of two, moving rate of fire of one, anti-tank 11, three plus firepower, and forward firing. All right, so let's talk about the um, the range first. So 32 inches is pretty standard for a uh, 7.5 millimeter gun, uh, but you are outranged by um, certain things that want to kill you. <laughs> Primarily things like M10s and Sherman 76s. They both have 36 inch range uh, guns that um, can outrange you by four inches so that's something to, to keep in mind when you're facing those guys also if you're facing any opponent who has a 28 inch range on their weapons you outrange them by the you know by the same amount uh, so just keep that in mind when you're engaging um, this is one of the things that really caught us off, off guard when we were playing our first few version 4 late war games was that they changed the range on a lot of these weapons they they may give them a more nuanced um, uh, range of, of ranges uh, before m almost all you know 75 millimeter 7.5 76 millimeter um, all of those all had like 32 inch range um, now they're again it's a little bit more nuanced all right um, so then uh, the halted and moving rate of fire that's pretty standard for a heavy gun um, the really nice thing about the, the Stug and the Panzer IV for that matter is that it has an anti-tank rating of 11. So this gun kind of sits between the American uh, 75 millimeter and the American 76 millimeter gun. Um, so anti-tank 11. We're going to talk about what that means in an engagement in a little bit. Um, then you have a firepower of 3 plus which is standard for a, a 7.5 and the other rule for this gun is forward firing and basically it is just because it is hull mounted um, it's it doesn't have a turret that spins um, what that means if you don't know is it's just basically has like a hundred and eighty degree firing arc from the front of the hull so if I am a uh, if I am a Sherman here facing this tank 
Um, on the German turn, I can shoot him at full rate of fire without moving. But if I manage to get my tank here for, I'll scoot it up so you can see that better. If I manage to get my Sherman tank here, in the German shooting phase, um, he, he can't shoot him. Um, in the movement phase, he would have to move to get him into arc. And the downside of that is if you do that, you have reduced your rate of fire, so you're now down to, uh, from two to one. Um, so that is the 7.5 millimeter gun on this guy. Uh, the next thing is uh, machine guns. Uh, machine guns is not so great, but Germans are, aren't really known for the machine guns. And, uh, you know, as a primarily an American player, I'm used to having just a forest of, of 30 cal, 50 cal machine guns on uh, all of my tanks. But uh, this guy only has uh, one machine gun, range 16, which is pretty standard for, um, for that. It's a halted rate of fire of three, moving rate of fire of two. Um, anti-tank 2 firepower 6 plus so it's you know the equivalent of a, a 30 cal so what's interesting is this does have a moving rate of fire decline so if you have a platoon of four of these guys which i recommend um moving they're only shooting eight machine gun shots total which is sad um stopping they they get 12 which isn't great but uh it's it's decent uh 12 machine gun shots will on average repel uh, even a, a veteran, uh, you know, careful assault on you from infantry in the open um, and have a pretty decent chance if they're coming out of concealment. Uh, all right, so that's the stats for the, um, the Stug. Uh, again, it's a pretty good tank. Um, in this particular version, you're paying about five, uh, like 5.5 points per tank. And I think there is, um, um, I think there's actually looking at the card, there's not a discount for taking more. It's actually more expensive to take more. If you take four of these in a platoon, it is 23 points, um, which makes them a little bit more expensive per, per tank. Um, and where two of these is only 11 points. Um, okay. So there you go. That is the stats. So, Let's talk a little bit about how you can use this guy. Here are some common foes for the Stug or Stug uh, assault gun. We have an American Sherman 76, Sherman 75, M10 tank destroyer. All right, so um, the Stug is a pretty favorable and superior matchup to a normal Sherman. It is... Um, you know, it's, it's uh, got better armor, it's got a better main gun. Um, this particular version has a better motivation. Um, they assault about the same. Um, the only thing that the American uh, Sherman has going for it is more machine guns. And the, um, the main gun has, um, of course, a stabilizer special rule. So you're... Um, you know you're you're better than a normal sherman now the m10 tank destroyer um you guys are kind of they're, they kind of serve a similar purpose although the salt guns meant for um probably more they're doctrinally wise they're they're different but on the battlefield of flames of war they fulfill a similar role um but in a lot of cases the m10 is going to be superior um the armor though we'll talk about what this guy they, this guy has better armor this stuck has better armor seven versus front armor five um, that is somewhat counterbalanced by the AT12 versus um, you know AT11 over here uh, but even then you add those together um, the stug still comes out slightly ahead um, the Big advantage with the M10 is that it has a turret. The turret is, um, again, kind of lets it go shoot behind itself uh, without losing rate of fire. Um, otherwise, they are uh, pretty similar vehicles. Next, let's consider the Sherman 76. The same anti-tank 12 gun that the M10 has, basically stats-wise. 
It has um, front armor 7, it's the same as the Stug, better armor, uh, stabilizer rule, more machine guns, uh, overall a better tank, but you, you pay more for it. Um, the Sherman 76 is a great counter versus a Stug. Uh, the, so you've got pretty much you know superior, about equal to, and um, this one is, is better than you. So just keep that in mind when you're facing it. Another thing too, just like with all of these tanks, is consider the odds when you're fighting. If you're in a firefight, a platoon of four Stugs versus, say, a platoon of four of, of these, you know, plain Jane Shermans, at long range, that is a great um, trade-off for you. If you can trick an American player into that type of battle, um, good for you. Because at long range, um, your AT-11 gun is hitting front armor six, which would go to seven for long range. So, uh, one to three, if he rolls a one, two, or three in his armor roll, uh, he's penetrated, a four might bounce it. And that's at long range. 66% of your results are, are uh, good for that. But him shooting back with his AT-10 gun versus your front armor seven, which would go to an eight, uh, means you only roll a nine. You know, you, uh, just a one is a fail and a two is an equal. So it's basically almost twice as effective. I know that one less anti-tank, one less armor, results in this tank being uh, half as effective in a stand-up gunfight uh, versus the Stug. So it's just something to consider. If you, you can talk your opponent into that kind of fight, um, that's a fight that the Stug's gonna win. Um, you're gonna be pretty much even or come out slightly ahead against the M10 because the M10 is firing its AT-12 versus your, at long range, versus your front armor eight at long range, means a, a one, two, three uh, is going to penetrate their armor rolls of one, two, three, and a four is going to equal. So only a five or six is gonna bounce for the Stug. The Stug firing back at the uh, M10, you have your AT-11 versus five, which would go to a six. And then um, you need to get to an 11 to, to bounce it. So you need a five to roll a five to bounce it, and a, or sorry, five to equal it, six to bounce completely. So they're bouncing on a five or a six, they're bouncing on a six, the shot. So again, he's bouncing twice as many shots coming at him than this guy. So if you can trick a M10 platoon into a stand-up long-range fight, um, the Stugs theoretically are going to come out on top. The um, Sherman 76, that guy, he, he you don't want to be in a stand-up fight against him at long range uh, because it's kind of that math turns around. So you both have, at long range, you both have front armor 8 to each other. The fact that he's anti-tank 12 versus your anti-tank 11 gives him that edge just like you had against the M10 except the other direction. Um, which is, is not good. You're going to need a 40 equal 5.6 to, to bounce um, against the AT-11 versus 8. A uh, 3 is going to equal and a 4, 5, or 6 is going to bounce. Um, so he bounces on a 5.6, he bounces on a 4, 5, or 6. So um, the Sherman 76 has the advantage so after the matchup, let's talk a little bit about how you might employ them tactically then. Where is the best place for them? Now keep in mind that this kind of discussion is very open-ended. It's dependent on terrain, the mission, whether you're attacking or defending, whether it's um, short end to short end or long end to long end. You know, There are hundreds of variables that impact this. So we're just going to talk some very basic uh, tactics where the Stug uh, performs well. So the uh, Stug at long range, which we talked about in our uh, armor examples against uh, the Americans, um, is a decent tank. Most of your medium class targets um, you're going to have an advantage of in a stand-up fight. So looking for an area where you can um, uh, you can make that happen is always good. Stugs in ambush can be helpful um, and so on. 
making sure you have that rate of fire too is um, very helpful. The fact that you guys have that you know these guys have um, a better motivation and better better skill means that they can pull off movement orders more often than a lot of American formations. And that means if you play your cards right, you get the first shot. Um, now we talked a little bit about the matchup of <coughs> the the M10 and the the Sherman 76. If you get the first uh, salvo at a Sherman 76 platoon, that goes a long way towards evening the you know um, leveling the playing field in that kind of exchange. Um, look for the opportunity to fire, get your tanks to fire first before they take any incoming fire. Because sadly, front armor seven uh, is good, but it's going to get penetrated. Um, the other thing is try to field these in units of four. The Fallschirmjäger um, platoon for these lets you field them in four for 23 points. Um, units of three are just not, they just don't stick around like they should. Um, you know, if, if he's destroyed and he's bailed out, uh, if he doesn't get back in, you're, you're testing already. Um, the Having them at a four, even though it's more expensive, just gives you a little bit more insurance on uh, keeping around your rather expensive tank platoon. Now, uh, another thing to keep in mind, though, is because it's AT-11, that's, that's a scary gun to American and British players, for the most part. Um, at short range, AT-11 is really dangerous against front armor 5 and 6, even 7. Um, and so y you don't need to be afraid to bring these guys into short range versus uh, your opponent. You do want to be wary of infantry. Um, armored rifles can ruin these guys' day. Uh, even American rifle platoons that are large can assault these guys and they're going to break off. Um, but keep that in mind, that's why you have other things in your army, like your own infantry, your own artillery, and, and so on. Um, they can go in and assault if they need to. If the 4 plus an assault to kill something is not bad, but um, don't count on it because they have a really bad counterattack rating, and they're not going to stay in the fight. They're not going to crush a ton of people under their tracks before they run away. Uh, always look for flanking shots. Always look to deny the enemy... Um, flanking shots on you. Unlike, you know, we've talked about the Tiger, which has an amazing side armor of eight. These guys only have a side armor of three. Um, that means that they don't even get a save against um, any of those American tanks we looked at from the side. Uh, bazooka skirts help against um, bazookas and things like that, firepower five plus, six plus, but they don't help against uh, the big uh, American guns. If you get uh, American players and British players on your side um, pull back make sure you keep your front to them and, and so on because if you have an aggressive American player he's going to be looking for getting to your flanks and using those stabilizers and uh, robbing you of any kind of armor save uh, for your tanks. So that's just a, a few uh, tactics that uh, you want to look at when you're on the board. Uh, the next thing is we you know we talked about the matchup against the Americans but now why, as a German player, would you take Stugs instead of Tigers, or Panzer IVs, or Panthers? Um, well, in the case of Panthers and Tigers, they are, um, those two are much more expensive than the uh, humble Stug here. Um, so that's something to consider. They are, um, when you consider it versus the Panzer IV, which is pr probably the closest unit to this as far as effectiveness goes, same gun, same kind of speed, um, the Panzer IV has a turret, these guys have um, one better armor on the front. They, um, you know, it, it's something to, to look at those tanks, and we'll do a Panzer IV uh, video down the road. But um, depending on what you're looking at, if you're uh, being aggressive and charging into an enemy, Panzer IVs might be better. If you are defending um, or supporting an attack, not the, the spearhead of the attack, uh, these guys might be better with that, that better armor. Um, you know, that decision is up to you. The fact that these guys are Fallschirmjäger uh, makes them really nice to deploy with your Fallschirmjäger infantry company. Um, if you have that, it's very thematic to do that. Um, 
these guys were pretty hardcore uh, in Normandy, and I think their rules reflect that. Um, as German players kind of progress in their, um, you know, their their skill level and their comfort level with Flames of War, they're going to gravitate less and less from things like tigers to things like stugs. Um, so when you see a player pull out stugs on the table, um, you know that player might know what they're doing. So you want to <laughs> you want to be careful if you're an allied player. Um, other times. Yeah, it's uh, these guys also I think came in one of the many open fire starter box versions a long time ago, um, some plastic ones. But anyway, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. All right, so the um, Panzer IV versus Stug, we talked about that. We don't need to really compare the stats versus the Tiger or the Panther because um, it kind of blows these guys out of the water uh, and their price also. <laughs> <laughs> blows them out of the water. All right, the last thing to talk about would be the uh, formation you can take them as. Really, if you want to take them, you can take them one of two ways. You can support most of the um, the German formations out of the D-Day book, um, and they, they're great support as a support platoon, or you could take them as their own platoon, and so they have a Fallschirmjäger assault gun company. Uh, that company is up to three of these platoons. One of those platoons can be the the uh, the Stu H, which is the kind of the howitzer version of these guys. This video is not about that, uh, but in that formation, you could take one of those uh, those platoons. Otherwise, you can take up to three uh, plus the HQ, so you could cram quite a, a number of these into a, a formation. So if you took um, you know, three four-man tanks, that's 12, plus two in the HQ, you can have up to 14 of these guys in a formation. Um, in that uh, assault gun company, you can also take either a um, Fallschirmjäger platoon or a, uh, I think it's a grenadier platoon, like a beach defense grenadier platoon. So there's not a lot of extra um, units in the core assault gun formation, which might not make it very, very attractive. Um, it's, it's always terrible if you lose enough tanks that the whole formation runs away. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, I think these guys are better as support for some other type of formation, but I have run Stug uh, companies before and I'm sure I'll do it again uh, because it's just fun to have uh, a bunch of tanks. I, I like the, uh, the medium tank uh, ethic, like medium tanks versus medium tanks. I find that very um, entertaining for me and it kind of matches my play style. And um, you know, these guys won't do you wrong. They're a good good selection. So there you go guys. Uh, sorry I got a little long-winded here, uh, but I like talking about uh, Flames of War, as you can tell, and I like talking about uh, cool tanks. So I hope you enjoyed this. As always, please uh, check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. We'd appreciate it if you followed us there. Uh, also here on YouTube, let us know down in the comments below, what do you think about this tank? What do you think about the official pronunciation? Um, what are your great victories and horrible defeats at the hands of these stugs? Uh, I'm curious and I'm sure other people would be too. Everyone has different experiences. Um, also, if you don't mind here on YouTube, please do give us a like and subscribe. Click that bell to receive notification when we publish new material. As always, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.